Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today we're going to talk about the ligaments of the pelvis. Uh, in an earlier series, I talked about the bony landmarks, and most of the bony landmarks, ligaments, motion, etc., is coming from my, my book on the pelvis. I actually teach many courses on the pelvis, SI joint, lumbar spine, and manipulation, and you can find them all on my website, uh, johngibbonsbodymaster.co.uk. In terms of the ligaments, this pelvis was kindly donated to me by a good friend of mine. It's actually a human female pelvis, and I think it's pretty remarkable. And, um, and I think we'll start with the posterior aspect. And according to Vleeman, he talks about one of the key ligaments, and then he talks about this ligament called the sacrotuberus. And if you think of the name, ligaments are relatively straightforward. Think of the name sacrum, sacro, tuberous, the ischial tuberosity. So they connect from point A to point B. So this is the sacrotuberus and it continues directly up here. And then according to Vleeman, there are four muscles that attach directly onto this ligament. The bicep femoris is one of the hamstrings and that connects and continues. And according to Vleeman, it connects contralaterally all the way up to the occiput. But according to Myers, he talks about his sling called the superficial backline, and it connects on the ipsilateral side all the way up. Also the gluteus maximus attaches to it, so that will influence the tension of the ligament. And he talks about a condition called force closure, where the muscle can influence the tension of a ligament, and then change in the tension of a ligament will then alter the force closure for the sacrum on the ilium, which is the SI joint. We've also got the piriformis directly attaching onto this area. Even though it comes from the anterior surface of S2 to S4 and fills the space of the greater sciatic foramen and then goes to the bony landmark on the femur of the greater trochanter. But there is an influence to this ligament. Also the multifidus, which is part of the inner core stability. So if you think about the transverse abdominis, when we co-contract with the multifidi, multifida connects directly to that. So that's why movements like of inner core, pilates, works very well because it gives you an influence of force closure. The ligament directly adjacent to that is known as the sacro spine because it goes from the ischial spine directly to the sacrum. So this is also known as the sacrospinous and is part of this two ligament mechanism that would be known as the key ligaments here. Now, let's continue further up. Directly inferior to the PSIS, you can't really see it that well, but is a, a ligament that we call the long dorsal ligament or part of the, the sacroiliac posterior here that connects down. And then the sacrotuberus and the long dorsal, they are synergistic in one way. What that means is if the pelvis is in relative balance, then these two ligaments have equal tension. However, if the innominate bone, which is the ilium and the ischium and the pubic bone, is forward, we so we'll call it innominate rotation, another name is an anterior rotation, then it means that the long dorsal ligament here will actually be on stretch. And because of a change of position here, the sacrotuberous ligament will actually become relatively lax. And vice versa, if the innominate goes posterior, then the long dorsal ligament will slacken and then the sacrotuberous ligament will now become tensioned. That also goes the same for the sacrum. If the sacrum goes forward, when they call it nutation, then these two ligaments will become taut, as in on stretch, and then the long dorsal ligament will now slacken. And if the sacrum comes backwards, which is called counter nutation, then it means that these two ligaments will now slacken and the long dorsal ligament will now become tensioned. So you can see that they sort of like work together in one respect, but they are antagonist, agonist, as in opposite, in another relationship. The deep ligaments in here, the deep, deep ones are called the interosseous, but the ones you can see here will be the dorsal sacroiliac ligaments coming across this way. You'll also notice on the spines or the sacrum here, so we would be called like the supraspine ligament that comes all the way down. This is the L5 and then it articulates with the sacrum. So this would be L5, S1. Uh, another key ligament, even though it's not known as the key, will be the iliolumbar ligament. And this is the L5 here. And then if you notice inside, you can see these separate bands 
all coming from one ligament. The actual L4 vertebra is missing because there are bands onto that. And according to studies, the iliolumbar ligament has five separate bands, which goes onto the L5 transverse process here, and also connection onto the L4 transverse process. And these are almost like a guy rope, if you like, to keep the lumbar sacral um, stable. Now, but let's just talk a bit more about the iliolumbar. This is the iliac crest, and then there is a muscle called the quadratus lumborum, and the quadratus lumborum merges within this iliolumbar ligament. So the quadratus lumborum, which attaches onto the lumbar vertebra here, again like the guy ropes coming down, and also an attachment onto the 12th rib. But because it attaches, not only does it influence the rib in terms of expiration, because it merges here, it will provide the stability for the lumbosacral junction again because of its natural connection. Let's move around onto the anterior surface here. On the anterior surface, this is actually the anterior longitudinal ligament and this would be the lumbar component and then further down in here would be the continuation but this would be the sacral component of the anterior longitudinal in this area in here. On the side, so this would be the iliac fossa, this is known as the sacral alar here, and then the connection between the two is filled by this group of ligaments known as the anterior sacroiliac ligaments in here. Okay, let's move on to the anterior superior iliac spine, the pubic tubercle. This is the inguinal ligament or the inguinal ligament, and you can see the space in between and then that space under the ligament will be the passage of the psoas merging with the iliacus to go down onto the lesser trochanter of the femur. But also within that space will be the femoral artery coming from the iliac, coming from the descending aorta. And then is also you've got the nerve called the femoral nerve coming from L234 that goes underneath it and branches down into the quadricep. And then you've got the return in vein. Typical, this area is like a landmark directly above in terms of herniation. Above it will be femoral and then directly on it, sorry, let's rephrase that. Directly below it is femoral, apologize. Directly above it will be abdominal. But if you have a hernia within this sort of concept area here, then that would be known as an inguinal hernia. Typical in men, uh, more so than women, mainly because of the, the, the weakness due to the spermatic tubes. Now, Onto the joint on the front, so this would be the symphysis pubis, and then we've got a disc in between. So we've got the superior pubic symphysis ligament coming down, and the inferior yeah, along this area, or the arcuate ligament in here. So then we've got the ligaments that hold and bind together the symphysis pubis joint here. On the hip joint, there's a ligament, so you've got the capsule, but then we've got the ligaments overlying here. So this would be like the inverted Y. So this would be known as the iliofemoral ligament, which is one of the strongest ligaments we have. We've also got, this is the pubic bone to the femur. So this is the pubofemoral ligament. And then the one at the back will be known as the ischiofemoral ligament. So these three main ligaments, the pubofemoral, the iliofemoral, and the pubofemoral will be all part of the iliofemoral joint complex, the ligaments here. I think that is the majority of the ligaments that I can see. So there we have the main ligaments of the pelvis, SI joint and the hip joint.